Hey guys, so today our Persithia bush is starting to get some little blooms on it, but I wanted to show you all the progress on our seedlings. So I bought these guys earlier in the week whenever we got some feed from the local feed store. And I've actually pinched a few leaves off of these leggy spinaches um, that keep getting knocked over every time I water them. But we also have some new spinach seedlings coming up and out. So that's really good. We've got bunches of parsley. Uh, it's another spinach plant over here in this one. Just getting things growing. Now, oh, I gotta turn this bin around so we can see what's planted. Now, I don't know. If, ooh, there he is. There's a uh, woodpecker hiding on the other side of that tree from me. And I got a little peek at him. But I'm wondering if he'll peek back around. There he is. Oh, I'm going to have to set the camera up to spy on him. I don't think he... Oh, is that a woodpecker? What is that? Is it? Is it raining? Oh boy. Okay, so I got this turned around. We have oregano planted along this whole side. And yeah, these four, four cell containers. And then we have a whole section of thyme. I could always use some more thyme. <laughs> um, toothache plant for Randy. And we've got Thai basil in three sections, like three rows. And then gomfrina, which is like, it's almost like a straw flower. It's real, uh, well, dry <laughs> of a flower. I don't know, it's pretty. I'll show you guys sometime. I have some dried in the house, but we don't have any action on these. And I love the gomfrina because it, it bloomed all, all year last year. I'd gotten some seedlings from the farmer's market um, and really loved them. So I'm going to be planting, well, hopefully all of these will germinate. I got the seeds from Baker Creek or a rareseeds.com. And now over here, oh, I guess I did two batches of Thai basil. I really like Thai basil, you guys. Um, Randy and I both do. So my job's tears have not started germinating yet. Uh, one, one little Thai basil. Wee! <laughs> like, he's such a little feller. It's okay. And then, no action on my rosemary yet. We've got one of... Sorry for all the traffic noises. That's just life here. Um, a wild bergamot. Bergamo. Bee balm. Boop. One little seedling of that. And then, some more parsley. And that's all we have going on right now so the first thing that i'm doing this week uh getting video of at least is i used dehydrated carrots and celery in a navy and great northern bean chicken broth based soup which is delicious but i don't know what went wrong with the celery it is just mega duper fibrous so the carrots are delicious though but oh my god I put so much celery in it um which was would have been the perfect amount of celery had the celery not been just really like it fights you trying to eat it um so my plan to salvage this because like in most things recipes rarely uh go perfectly so a lot of making it taste good is just troubleshooting. And so I'm removing as much of the celery as I can. I think next batch I'm going to try blanching it. And what I'm going to do with the rest of this current batch of the dehydrated celery is before mixing it into food, I'm going to try powdering it. Like next time I do something like this, I'm going to powder it and see if we can just use it as like a celery salt. Um... And just see how that goes. But what I'm doing to try to salvage this dish. Because there's quite a bit of it. And it's difficult to eat. Like it tastes good. It's just difficult. Um, is I'm putting as much of the celery as I can over into one, one, 
one Tupperware. And then we're going to puree that one with an immersion blender. And then we're going to mix them together. Like, I'm going to taste it to make sure that it's not just super duper hard to eat. Like, if something unanticipated goes wrong. And then if it tastes good, we're going to mix it together. So that's the plan for that. I'll let you guys know how it goes. Okay, guys. So it's like super dark and I don't have my headlamp on, but can you hear? Can you? There's toads, you guys. It's also super windy, but maybe the toads won't hear me. Let's flip around. Okay. Oh, well, they're gonna see me coming now. Do you hear them though? I think there's toads in my pond. Are there any toads in this one? Not that I see. Let's make it big screen. No toads yet. And this, I need to clean that out. It's all full of trash and who knows what else. Okay. I'm tiptoeing. Still tiptoeing. See that toad right there? The fish is gonna bite his butt. Oh, he's doing the thing. Oh, there's other toads in there, you guys. Do you see them? Oh, they're doing it. Hot dog. Get it, girl. Y'all are perpetuating your species, or trying to. Good luck. Cause I bet these fish are gonna eat up all your eggs. But that's why we have the other one, the other pond that didn't have any fish in it, to try to give them a chance. So I'm gonna set the tripod up so you're not getting seasick. I hope I didn't drop my phone in here. Well, here I was being worried that they were going to hear me and run away. And he's just hollering up a storm. <laughs> there he is. Can you feel the love tonight? This guy can. There he is. He loud though. And I'm just looking to see if I can find any toad spawn. Man, these fish though. Do y'all see them? Oops. Those three fish have been alive in this pond for two years. come around this way and see if we can get up close oh where'd he go oh there he is he just hanging out sprog on a log well he's a toad but I'm still looking there, you can see. No, that's the edge of a leaf. <laughs> I thought I had seen some toad eggs. I wonder if I can... Well, there's no eggs in here yet, but good luck to the bunch of them. I can't really get a good angle. There we go. 
Maybe that's a decent angle. Is there something over here? Or did I just bump a leaf and get excited? I do that a lot, apparently. Oh, it's just some trash. I feel like I'm one of those. Y'all, I'm so good at this. I could get professional Sasquatch footage because this is on par. <laughs> There's those fish doing what fish do. Well, all right, this is officially the first toads that we've had in the pond in 2020. It's very exciting. Oh, this fish is swimming. That is loud, man. You can get up the stairs. Come on, boy. Oh, my babies. Ooch. Ooh. <laughs> We're good boys. We're good boys. Hey, everybody. Vaughn here with the Vonster vlog. And it has been spitting snow on and off all morning. Now I'm coming out here to tend my critters. So it, there's not really looking like a whole life happening in the backyard right now. But our Egyptian bunching onions are really coming back up. Our sage is starting to show some some life. Our derpadiddles. Ooh, look at that. That's a lemon bone. I'm actually going to dig that up and divide it and get two to four plants out of it maybe. And it's spitting snow again. I don't know if you're going to be able to see. It's just crazy. It's not sticking because the ground's warm and wet. But that's okay. I'm just coming around. I think now I'm going to let the... Ooh, we got some bee balm coming up over here. Next to this nice piece of trash that blew in. And then there you can see some greenery on the raspberries. That's always nice. Let's unleash, well, I'd say unleash the quacking if they were ducks, but it's just the chickens. Is that all six seeds? Two, three, four, five, where's nutmeg? Nutmeg. So there's everybody having breakfast. Today they get a mix of laying crumbles, mealworms, and black oil sunflower seeds. And then they get to free range. I won't get my finger out the way. The whole backyard, if they'll stay in it. Nutmeg has been jumping the fence lately. So I am fixing to have the premiere for our weekly vlog, and I could not resist. Huh? What are you saying? I'm recording. Oh. <laughs> I could not resist getting some video of these beans. It's hard to get work done. When you're when Ember's so adorable. Oh, don't hide your little nose. I'm gonna boop it. Boop. There we go. She's like, don't you touch me. <laughs> oh, oh, that's a good itch. <laughs> All right, time to get to work. <laughs> Premierception. <laughs> well, Randy, I'm vlogging this part too. <laughs> So hey everybody who's watching the premiere, who's been watching the premiere. Ah! Hey guys, 
so we lost Clove today. And the best way to celebrate someone's life is with a wake. And we're having a bread wake with the other chickens. Oh, she took the whole slice. And I thought I would share our girls with you guys and just enjoy this beautiful dreary day that it is very very good to be alive on well, <laughs> go get I'm tossing it out there for y'all I don't mean to keep hitting you poppy it just keeps <laughs> ginger you're blocking the camera <laughs> go on guys go get them Oh my gosh. Good girl, go. let's go on. We got some sesame seed buns. We got the ends of some brioche bread. Ooh, we got some cornbread. Y'all love cornbread. There's bread all over the place. And you're here looking at me. <laughs> it's part of the bittersweet. Um, I suppose it sounds corny, but circle of life here on the homestead is part of the wonderful part of enjoying having the chickens and sharing my, you know, sharing my garden with them is I get the I get to miss them when they're not around yeah you're a good girl that night oh yeah they love the cornbread it breaks apart a little easier for them so I think they actually prefer that to the um, what you doing ginger I think that breaks apart a little easier for them than <laughs> and then the yeast breads. Or at least Poppy seems to have a preference. As, I don't know. I don't know if it's been the cold or the humidity or what. But they all seem a little sneezy and poopy butted. So. Poppy's so old now. She still lays. Maybe, you know, two, maybe three eggs a week, but she's still laying. And she's like six years old. Clove was only three. I'd raised her from a hatchling. Or chick, I suppose is what they're called. But yeah, she and Clove and Chia. And, well, here, come on over here, Nutmeg. Clove and Chia and Bay and Ginger were all part of the same flock um like the same year of uh chicks and we had saffron but she didn't she passed away last winter so sometimes i wonder about if maybe i don't know i don't know if it's a breeder thing i don't know if it's a nurture thing i don't know if i'm doing something wrong yeah oh you're such a good bird look at you Mighty dinosaurs. Mighty dinosaurs. Nom nom nom. <laughs> nom nom nom. Okay. Well, get an helmet, babe. Do you like that side better? Yeah. Nom nom nom. Oh, oh, she took the whole piece of bread. <laughs> I love hand feeding the chickens. There's a little crumb. Do you want it? Who wants a tiny crumb of bread? Nobody. <laughs> Got another piece of sesame bun. 
I try, like, when I feed them old bread, I try to not give them anything that's moldy, just stale stuff. Oh, here comes Poppy. Yeah, you can actually see Poppy's getting little gray feathers on her eye ridges. Hey, Chia. I love these birds beyond what I think might be reasonable. They're just the, the hardest workers in my whole garden. <laughs> so Chia over here is our most standoffish, but I don't hold it against her. Uh, second most standoffish is Poppy. <laughs> I think that's all they want right now. Uh, Chia is a light brown, Brahma. Uh, oh, I think, I don't know what, what Poppy is. She's a hybrid, um, Silky Cochin, maybe? Um, what are you? Buff Orpington. G is, uh, Ginger's a Buff Orpington. Nutmeg is an Easter Ager. And Chia is a Bard. Rock? Plymouth Rock? I don't know. Bard something. But they do such a good job of keeping the... the she just wiping her face on my shoe. But yeah, I just keep a, an old baggie of old bread. What you doing, chicken? Bok, bok. Bok, bok, bok. <laughs> it's just real nice to come out and hang out with them. Enjoy the nature noises. Yeah, I don't know if you can see with the little silver feathers around Poppy's eyes. They just eat the grass as they come, come in. So currently, Nutmeg and Poppy are my two oldest girls. And Nutmeg has really slowed down on egg production. Like, I might get maybe one or two eggs from her, even though she's just half the age of Poppy. But yeah, so I just sit here with my girls. It makes me so happy to get to hang out with them.
So we are baking some cookies and they're starting to deflate. Randy and I like a really gooey cookie. These might be a little underdone, but that's why we're just doing six of them to test it out. The book that the recipe is from that I'm using is the Hershey's Classic Recipes. This was actually given to me for my birthday by my best friends. Oh, my best friend and her parents when I was back in high school. And it's been a particularly rough year this month, this week. Um, and so it was really nice to get a message from the past. And I think, yep, the Hershey's Great American Chocolate Chip Cookies. If you wanna make it, go ahead and screenshot that. And then that, I used parchment paper to put the cookies on <clears throat> and I'll show you what we're doing with the rest of them so it's 31 degrees outside and I didn't have any room in the freezer so I hope the raccoon that lives in our porch doesn't doesn't steal any of my cookies but there are there is more batter in the fridge um, but I have them out here uh, freeze solid enough hopefully and then we're gonna vacuum seal them Okay, so about an hour after setting them out onto the porch, they are now frozen pretty solid. Uh, this is the best walk-in freezer, though, is outside in the winter. And I think Randy's... We put the extra dough in the fridge. I'm making another batch, because we're going to be extra fat today. <laughs> so I have a section of freezer bag paper. Or, not the paper part, just the freezer bag. I think both sides are sealed. I'm gonna click seal and I'm gonna put six cookies into each bag and then try to have it, I've never done this before so I don't know if it'll be <clears throat> nice and separated. One, two, three, four, five, six. Cause I don't want them all just sticking to each other, you know? But this is enough cookies that for, for an evening, like we're having a double batch tonight, um, but future Randy and Vaughn are going to make much better decisions in general. And I'm going to put it on gentle and back seal. Let's see what's happening. And I'll click stop because it's not actually pulling any air out. <clears throat> I think because I didn't cut it very straight. So make it a little bit straighter. Make sure there's no crumbs in the way. Line it up. Because you got to have it reaching far enough into the vacuum chamber. Ooh, what you doing? There we go. It's still not doing anything. Oh, well, I think I... Mm, I don't think I have enough plastic. This might have to be, I'm gonna take two of the cookies out <clears throat> because this might have to be a, like maybe we'll have cookies and ice cream or something. So it apparently really, really matters to have a nice straight edge. Here come the doggies. That's much more like what we're looking for. And gentle seems to be doing just fine. I'm gonna see if I can't zoom in. And we'll get this again. Yeah, uh, that should be good because we can open it up and break them apart. So then we've got one, two, three, four. And then I'm gonna I really did cut some of these bags too small. There it goes. No, it's not. <clears throat> What's going on here, I wonder? There 
There we go. Excellent. But yeah, I didn't make all of the bags too small, just most of them apparently. There we go. But there's another batch of cookies and if they get stuck together in the freezer then we'll just break them apart. And I'm going to write uh, 375 for 8 to 12 minutes is what I'm going to write across here as well as the date. But I don't have a marker right now. So let's cut. Ooh. That's a big one. <laughs> We're going to have some more cookies. So it got down to freezing last night, so we brought all of the seedlings in, and this is how I kind of keep them. I'd love for all of my bins to have lids that I've installed the grow lights on, but only two of them have that so far. But I'm going to get these guys moved back outside because it's still chilly, but it's at least very, very sunny outside. So let's get them moved. So, please pardon my expert one-handed camera working skills as I water my plants. So, I tried to grow my spinach from seed. And this one in this back corner, sorry about the traffic noises, this one in the back corner is already going to seed. So there's that. Oh, one of my jobs here sprouted. I'm going to do, okay, this is how I water my plants. I'm going to stop recording and then take you on an actual proper, can look at what I'm doing tour. There we go. Whoop. All right. Oh, I can't even reach the stop button. There we go. Okay. So it looks like our oregano is starting to sprout down here. I'm actually going to zoom in just a little bit. That way I can stand in the sun but show you close oh my gosh yeah we have got some serious sproutage going on that's nice and then coming through here with the gomfrinas which are those really nice uh dry flowers oh the salmon was the first to sprout i don't know if you can see back there and then we have some sprouting with the thyme. Ooh, some sprouting with the toothache plant. And then here's some, here's our spinach. A couple of them never grew. Now I'm using three or four year old seed, but the parsley's doing great. Some of them are. This one in particular is doing phenomenal. That one planted at the same exact time. Eh, that's okay. Yeah, these are jobs tears. I was going to try to make my own jewelry out of them. Uh, so there's one sprouting. They, they actually just look like grass. Another Thai basil. Randy and I love Thai basil. It's like our favorite. My rosemary. Oh my gosh. Ah, <laughs> it's sprouting. Okay, so I swear this one looks like a friggin' tomato, but it's supposed to be wild bergamot. Bergamot. I don't know how to pronounce it, but... The only thing that sprouted in my wild bergamot is what looks like a tomato. Now, I'm not going to pick it. Like, I'm not going to pull it out because, I mean, free tomato. Um, what you doing, critters? Ember's out on the porch. She's very much an indoor cat. Like, she doesn't like walking on the grass or anything. But she does love laying in the sun. Or, in this case, standing awkwardly. <laughs> I've never met a cat who was more confused about being a cat than Ember. That's okay, though. There's my cabbages. I did not start those, but I'm going to eat them. That's for darn tootin'. And then let's come over here where I actually have the tray backwards. Let me flip the tray around. Okay, so these seeds here are my most recently planted, like within the past week. We have pink dandelions, and it's just a row of each. Uh, Japanese white dandelions, snapjackins, bachelor buttons, lobelia. Sunset Milkweed, Passion Flower, Rutabecchia, or uh, Black Eyed Susan. Uh, Calendula, Yellow Echinacea, Echinacea Propia, and Cerise Queen Yarrow. And none of those seem to have sprouted yet. And then we've just got uh, three more big Yarrow pots along the back. So, this is my favorite width 
and possibly depth for whenever I'm using the uh, trays. Let's see what size, what dimension. This is a 40 quart, apparently. And it looks like it is 20, about 24 inches by 16 inches by 7.8 inches. But that width, that 24, that two feet wide is my favorite. And I think that's the same for these deeper bins. But this one here, um, let me get him turned. Because this one is 30 inches wide. I guess like on the long side um, and it is a little too wide it gets really cumbersome it's hard to get through doorways um, but I do love how much I can fit into it so still we're, and also I can fit two of these guys onto a shelf but I can only fit one of these so I don't know pros and cons Ooh, we got more Thai basil oh that's gonna make Randy so happy because we did not eat Thai basil enough last year like, not at all. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Well, it's afternoon now. Ooh. Just checking in on the seedlings. That does not look like bee balm. That looks like a freaking, is that a, I don't know what it is. I don't know, wild bergamot. Well, maybe that's not bee balm. I don't know, maybe it is what it's supposed to be. Oh, we've got these gumfrina. I'm going to show y'all here in just a sec what that gumfrina looks like. Where's my Sam dog at? There's my Sam dog. There's my Sam dog. Hey, buddy, what you doing here on the porch, huh? You laying in the sun being a dog? Go scratch that lump. Oh, he loves it when I scratch that lump. <laughs> right where you can't reach. That's okay. Oh, I got you, buddy. So here's an example of the dried gumfrina. They're these big, almost red clover looking flowers that um, just all season, beautiful blooms last year. I'd gotten some thirsty dog noises. I had gotten some at the um, farmer's market, some uh, transplants of them. And I just, I loved them. They were so beautiful, zero effort all season. So I'm growing a bunch this year. <laughs> Checking in with the boss on our heated blankie. Yeah. Whoa, she makes some crazy eyes. <laughs> mm, getting them scratch scratches in. I think, is she blown? She blown a spit bubble. <laughs> oh, that's how you know it's good. because it comes out a little gentler than the um, watering can. Ooh, one of my dandelions sprouted. Oh my gosh. Let's get you in here for a closer view. So you can see the little dandelion sprout. Beep boop. Hello dandelion, and it's one of the pink dandelions too. So I'm just watering. Cause it's pretty windy out in the wind. Oh, a calendula sprouting, a calendula, pot marigold, whatever you want to call it. That seed has sprouted. Yeah, getting a nice bit of water in there. Let's see what else is going Hmm. And if we listen, I love the sound of the soil drinking. I know it's just the sound of the water percolating through. I don't know if the camera's going to pick up on it, but as a kid, when I would be outside and it would be raining in the woods, this, this sound of the soil drinking was loud. And it's one of my favorite sounds. Like that layered with the raindrops hitting the leaves. It was nice.
Hey, baby. Yeah. You're such a good girl. Yes, you are. <laughs> yes, you are. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're ferocious, aren't you? See, yeah, I'm ferocious. Not that stick. Do you want to chase this stick? Yeah, you like chasing that stick better. <laughs> Hey guys, so it is a busy day in the kitchen today. We are defrosting a chicken, which should be, yeah, it's good and defrosted now. And I cleaned out the sink really well first, but we're still gonna this drain shake 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 your chicken shake your chicken that feels kind of morbid because that's what I do to my chickens outside too <laughs> so now this one was just from the store we don't raise uh, chickens for meat we just do them for eggs but I'm gonna set it here on the ninja foodie rack and let it drain uh, to kind of just dry off and then I'm going to rub it down with garlic salt and um, a bit of oil. And then we're going to be loading it into the um, Ninja Foodi. Oh crap, I don't think I can... I gotta wash my chicken hands before I touch my phone. This is my own blend of garlic powder and salt. And I'm just making a big old mess with it. That's fine. So I want to get it all over. And then my left hand's going to be my dirty hand. So I'm just going to get a bit of oil. And then we just start rubbing it all over the chicken. Flipping it. More garlic powder with salt. Now this is definitely, it's like three-fourths garlic powder and one-fourth salt. Um, so I am going to be adding more salt to this. Um, my friend uh, Tracy had recommended, she was like, stick butter under the skin. And it's like, I'm not very good at that. <laughs> so I'm just going to yeet it in there. But that is also why her roast chickens always taste better than mine. But, oops, bumping my head on the tripod. But I'm perfectly okay with that just because it's, I always end up like mangling everything. I was going to treat it like it's a body powder. <laughs> just get it up under the pits, everything. There we go. So now that we have this all ready to go, I'm going to set this in here on the rack breast side down. And I'm going to put in a cup of water and then get it going with the pressure cooking uh, for whatever it says in the recipe book. I'll have to look that up. So here is eight ounces of water. And let's see. Pressure cooking chart, legumes, poultry, chicken, whole, four to five pounds. Yep, bone and legs tied. I don't tie the legs. One cup water, cooking crisp basket. I'm using this thing. Uh, high for 25 to 30 minutes. I do it for 25 because then I'm going to be air frying it. Like I'm going to pressure cook it, flip it over, uh, and if it'll hold together. <laughs> um, cause last time I didn't flip it over eh, and it was fine. It, it was pretty good, but I would, I'd like to flip it over to crisp up the skin on both sides, um, with the air fryer setting. So check it out. 
check in my seal to make sure that's good. Boop, boop, boop. Twisting that on, put it over onto seal. I've been having some problems with um my little thingy. Like I'll put it over onto seal, but it'll still be hissing. So I have to like come over sometimes and like bother it. Doing pressure high for 25 minutes and start. That's all it takes. So I completely forgot about the chicken. Let's see how it's looking. Oh, well, that's weird. Yeah, that happened. Whoop, steamy. That happened last time, too. It's like a... Hi, there we go. Um, it's like one of those things from the Alien movie that bursts out of the chest. Um, smells good, though. Looks good. So now I'm just going to close it. And I'm going to do air crisp. We'll bump it up to 400. And I'm actually going to set a timer this time. I'm going to do it like uh, eight minutes and then flip it and then see where we go from there. So uh, I tried to flip it and it just fell to pieces. It is so tender and I'm really looking forward to eating it for lunch. But I'm letting it cool a bit because we're going to pull it apart and probably make like chicken quesadillas with it or something. But I wanted to show you all these drippings. The water down at the bottom has turned into a beautiful uh, broth. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm adding, this is four cups of water. I'm, I'm basically going to add water up to about, you know, maybe an inch or two away f of headspace. And then I'm going to add in some dehydrated carrots and celery and a whole onion. And well, the onion hasn't been dehydrated, but the carrots and celery have. And um, once I debone the chicken, we'll put all the bones and bits from this back in there and I'm just going to simmer it for like four to six hours uh, low and slow to make broth. So these are the dehydrated dehydrated celery that we had done and I'm going to go ahead and do just a cup. Now the celery it's keeping well but it's so fibrous I'm going to try again and try like blanching it this time before dehydrating and see if that helps with the texture. Um, though I am also going to try uh, powdering this and see if that helps with the texture as well. But um, it's perfect for just cooking for the flavor. So this is one of our pouches of carrots. Just opening that up and dumping that down and in now I don't know like I mean it should be okay to reuse this I just worry that the carrots kind of at risk of puncturing through the bag but really if it held its vacuum seal it should still be good but we can totally fit a narrow row of something powdered in this bag to get a second use out of it I'm really looking forward to getting um, a vacuum attachment for my vacuum sealer or the can attachment for my vacuum sealer um, that way I don't have to use these bags anymore and this is just an onion cut into wedges. Oh, there we go. And I'm gonna get this started back up onto slow cooker and just get it started. Even though I don't have the bones in it yet, there's no reason why the vegetables can't get a head start. So I've taken all the meat off and just putting all the bones and bits and cartilage and everything and then this has been going for about an hour and I'm just going to let that, I haven't added any salt or anything and I'm just going to let this keep cooking down, especially now that it has the bones in it, it'll get a much better flavor. And I try to not put any seasonings or anything in because I'd always like to season it after the fact. Um, so let's see, get that lined up, lid locked on. I'm going to increase the time to six hours and just keep going. Alrighty y'all, I am getting dinner going. If you hear clicking in the background, that is our kiln. Um, if you're not, most, I do think most of the folks here watching the Vonster vlog are here from my main channel. Um, so, but if it, just in case you're not, uh, we run our business out of our home making jewelry and tutorials and all sorts of stuff. 
and um, we run our kiln almost every day uh, as we are I can't call us fused glass artists because really I think I butcher the entire craft um, but I am striving to get better uh, but um, yeah we make a lot of fused glass um, pieces to use in our jewelry and I'm gonna try this on normal uh, and just see what happens loud noises I'm putting three pork chops into each bag because that's enough that we can either have a lot of meat for just Randy and I or a reasonable amount of meat for if there's three people. And I'm going to wipe this down um, after it, I'm getting pork cans on everything. So I'm going to wipe it down with a Clorox wipe after the fact uh, just for hygienic sake. I don't like to put stuff away. Um, you know, yucky. The normal seems to work pretty well. And again, just like with last time, I'm going to try to make sure... I'll wait till that's done making the noise. Uh, I'm going to wait and make sure after about, you know, a couple of minutes to make sure that the packages don't just puff back up. I want to make sure that um, we do have a good seal before just yeeting them on into the freezer. And I do make these bags using a roll of vacuum seal bag material. I find that a lot more economical than purchasing the pre-sized like sized bags, though the, I bet that would be uh, maybe more convenient, but really this isn't terribly inconvenient. And it really helps stuff to keep longer in the freezer, and I can also defrost it without having to worry about getting meat juices all over the place. Oh, I'm shaking the tripod, sorry. <laughs> but yeah, tonight for dinner we are having pork chops. And if you listen real close, there's a toad out in the pond. I went out and visited him while... Uh, Putting my chickens to bed. He didn't have any lady suitors this evening, but he's out there hollering. Shoot your shot, buddy. <laughs> so let's see. How many more pieces do we have? Well, okay, so we'll do three in this one, and then we'll do one that's just two. Usually, whenever I do um, a stir fry, I'll only use two pork chops and then maybe cut it a bit with. Uh, either some shrimp or just have way more vegetables than usual. Ooh, that looks good. So I actually think I'm going to just put these two into a Tupperware for in the fridge for uh, eating tomorrow. Yeah, I'm very pleased with that. And I'll just write pork loin. Now, it did pull a little bit of liquid through, but it's still sealed very nicely. Um, so I'll clean the bags up, clean this up, and get on with dinner. I think at, at the time of recording, um, I'm probably just going to pop the... What's it? The stock, the chicken stock that we're making uh, into the fridge because I am just exhausted uh, it's been a good but very long day, but for y'all, it'll be, you know, through the magic of editing, just right up next. Alrighty, y'all, so I've taken the stock off, and I'm really hopeful, I'm pouring from a big pan into a little pan, so we'll see how this goes. So I'd like to not flood myself. Oh, it looks like we'll be fine. Until I, oh, <laughs> until I add all this stuff. 
<laughs> well, we didn't overflow it just yet. That's a fair bit of stock, though. I don't know if you can see. And I want to leave that to sit to give to the chickens tomorrow. And I'm going to um, pop this into the... I'm going to let it cool for just a little bit. Ouch, yeah, that's real hot already. And then I'll pop it into the fridge until the morning. Are you okay, Bob? Yeah, he just breathing his food. He's fine. Good morning, everybody. I just wanted to spy on some toads with y'all. Oh my gosh. Where's he at? <laughs> These fish are going cray cray. Oh my gosh. I'd never seen the color difference between the males and females on the toads before. Well, I hate to disrupt them, but, or so, rather I should be saying, I'm going to get out of their hair. But I just wanted to share this with you guys. I think it's so cool that there's toads in our pond. Oh my gosh. Let's see if I can't zoom in. Let me use the top of my mermaid's head as a tripod. There be toads. There be toads in the water. Hey guys, so it is a beautiful start to the day today. It is the last day of our vlogging week. Actually, yesterday should have been, but um, I didn't want to leave y'all hanging with only seeing the broth get started. So we are uh, we are gonna finish the broth today, um, and then it's gonna be the start of a new week. So busy day going to unleash the chickens. Cue Walking Dead music. <laughs> There's Ford. We got one more woman up my gut. She's always taking her sweet time. All right, let's get everybody fed and watered. Ginger, you're a camera hog. I respect that. Hey, Jack. There's the chickens. Bay's over yonder digging in the dirt. I'm going to be later today, if it dries up a little bit, um, turning this uh, compost for them so that they can get to the bugs underneath the surface. And I'm also gonna be picking uh, greens out of the front, some henbit and chickweed and stuff um, for them to graze on. But they have had, the girls have had full reign of the whole backyard all winter. <clears throat> and y'all, they are a menace to society. <laughs> like, they tear everything up. Like, they come in, and you can see, I mean, they keep everything cultivated, but it also brings new seeds to the surface that then germinate. So I do have a perpetual weed problem, but they keep the bugs in balance for me. So I feel like that's perfectly reasonable. Um, but it's like, I'm gonna need to go through and clear out the paths of all the mulch once we get new mulch in, because I'm gonna put that that's decomposed into the beds to help raise the bed soil up, get it down basically to, un the reason we have raised beds in our garden is our backyard is all fill. Um, it's all fill dirt. Like, I don't know if you're able to tell, but like our backyard is higher up 
than the neighbor's backyard and all of it is just gravel underneath i like it because it made um our backyard doesn't flood the way that the neighbor's backyards do um but it really it's hard to grow anything in it especially if you want root crops which is something that randy and i like growing best of all um so we are going to be hopefully bringing all of our beds up to at least that depth if not 16 inches i'd like to do 18 because like that over there is a 10 inch board on top of eight inch boards like all of these were eight inch or six i don't know dude y'all i just work here but yeah so for nine years we've been working on building up the soil and we're very happy with it but this method of letting wood chips decompose in the garden paths and then scooping them up putting them into the beds um it takes full advantage all that chicken poop all that broken down wood chips everything and helps build our own soil that has so far been supplemented by our own rabbits as well as izzy's rabbitry uh, our good friends over there um but izzy's rabbitry izzy is going off to college and so she isn't going to be keeping rabbits to that degree anymore so we're not going to be getting you know 10 bins of rabbit poop a month which i have to say has done a lot to help that long raised bed that long raised bed that all of our raspberries are in like all of them like that poop has been a godsend <laughs> so we may get in a we, we may get another rabbit just to up our own poop production um but we'll see how it goes we'll see Alrighty, guys it is late we're gonna late start to this but it's 10 30 it will be done by midnight 31 maybe um i have the pressure cooker the pressure canner um coming up getting a little warm i've got it on like medium high medium heat right here i've got the chicken stock that we had made um i did two batches uh so like two whole chickens worth of bones and the same amount each time of carrots celery and an onion it's nice and piping hot i've got my quart jars and my pint jars over here sanitized and still pretty warm um like honestly these could do to be hotter but this is what we're working with it's not perfect but it still works i've got my kit uh lids and rings ready and my beloved randy you can see his hands uh has been cutting up when he's done he'll have cut up <laughs> 25 pounds of chicken that we were able to get for 238 a pound but five of those pounds we already had in the deep freeze too so we're just getting it canned up and I'm gonna put it into a time lapse so like I don't know magical editing stuff <laughs> what we've got going on here now is we've got all the chicken broth like six quarts of that of the chicken broth and two pints of chicken 
with broth added in as the liquid. Um, I know some people raw pack their chicken and don't add any liquid because it makes broth, but I, I don't mind adding a little bit of liquid because it makes, I think, more broth. Ooh, we're up to temperature. Now I do this for 10 minutes because uh, that valve came up and now the steam coming out of there. We're going to do that for 10 minutes. I've already got the timer set. Uh, and now I'm going to be covering the chicken with some foil and popping it into the fridge. We've got, this is the second bowl. The first bowl's already in the fridge. I'm going to rewash and heat up the jars tomorrow. And we, I'll check in back with you guys whenever we open this up. Before bed, it's 11 or 4 p.m. Oof. Uh, we'll open that back up and uh, see what it looks like whenever it's done. Because once this gets up to the yeah, the 10 minutes is up, uh, we'll put the the weight the weight on it and let it come up to pressure. I like to go with about 12 or 13 pounds of pressure. Um, and then it'll stay like that for 45 minutes. Alrighty guys, our timers are all up and we are going to be opening up. The pressure valve is all the way down. It's down to zero on the dial. Open that up. It's looking good. Looking real good actually. I'm going to clear out just a little bit of space. using my jar lifters. I'm going to start by taking out the chicken. And then, well I got the first jar of chicken, but now I'm going to take out ooh, these things of the quarts of broth that are still just boiling in their jars. Now you want to be real careful with this because these are just piping hot. That's a nice dark broth though. Wow, as dark as cider. and then we're good. I just wanted to pull all of these out, get it nice and cooling because I want to, before I can go to bed tonight, as late as it is, it's 1235 in the morning, I need these to pop so that I know that they're good and done. There's that one. And then I'm just going to leave all of this stuff out for tomorrow because I'm going to be spending the day canning tomorrow as well. Canning up the rest of the chicken that we have prepped in the fridge. So that will be for next week's vlog though. So this is the broth you guys. Um, I look forward in seeing you guys in next week's Thursday Monster Vlog Homestead premiere. Uh, if you if you were here during the premiere chat, hey everybody, thank you so much for coming and hanging out. Um, I am just dog tired. I'm exhausted but happy. And that is my favorite feeling in the world, is to be looking at those jars of really dark broth and canned chicken and just a happy, tired smile on my face, ready to go to bed and dream homestead dreams. So I will see y'all next time. And until then, you guys keep on keeping on. Mwah. Bye. <laughs>